poem called The Naming of Things. Oh. So. Foreshadowing. Right. <laughs> I do, I do actually have my poems memorized, but I'm going to read them anyway. Poor uh, You can find this on the internet, as opposed to. And there are books for sale. Woo! There were actually, okay, this is the last thing I'm actually going to say. Um, I made real books, and they're really nice, and they're coming, but shipping is what shipping is, and they're not here. So these are emergency chat books made what? for you just for you. So they're unique and rare. I'm that sure. is correct. You should also know I've been doing this for 12 years. Um, and in 12 years, this is my first chat book. Yay! So I, I, which if you know slam poets, you realize that they make chat books every day. <laughs> so 12 years of doing this on the national stage without having a single chat book. And this is my first one. And there's going to be a bound one that Jesse Welch will have for sale next week if you want one. Woo! 20 copies in the entire world, so oh, you can sell them on eBay, I'm sure. Uh, okay, cool. The naming of things. When I was four years old, the night shadows would often pull me from my bed to the room next door where my brother would fight them for me. That one, he'd say, that one looks like a dead old tree. We'll call him Mr. Tree. That one, that one looks like He-Man. <laughs> that one's obviously Optimus Prime. I like naming things. I still do. I name characters in fictions that I'll never write. Cornelius, Henrietta, blah, 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 blah. I name clouds and stars. I like the names that some already have. Ursa. Um, oh, clouds and stars, you can uh, Ursa, shadow cumulus. <laughs> Um, viruses and death despots, Ebola, Idi Amin, revolutionaries and despots, Staphylococcus, bacteria. I love the names of streets and old men, Melon Terrace, Humphrey McClintock. <laughs> <laughs> My friends will freak out when I name our potential children. As do strangers and people I meet in line at the post office. <laughs> I have names for all my imaginary offspring. If I had a baby with the state of Texas, I would name him Wesley. <laughs> I think Wesley, Texas has a nice ring to it. <laughs> my brother's not around anymore. I like to name the reasons why fate and circumstance, but I name him loss oh. instead. Oh. I've lost many things. I name that abandonment carelessness, fear. I name long nights loneliness and sad nights pity. I name the curve of my belly and the bags under my eyes insecurity. Oh, I have yeah. called myself aware and loneliness and lonely and scared. And I've taken these names and I've written them in this imaginary baptismal book that I carry around my neck, albatross. And I've weighed each consonant, bathed it in holy water, and called myself aware. And I've decided that the pages of my book look more like an etch-a-sketch than stone, mm -hmm. that I can rename these suckers. That abandonment can be transition. That uncertainty can merely be promises. That insecurity can be an abundance of raw material from which I get to carve myself anew. I've decided to take my friends and rename them life support machines. Now that sounds cold and sterile. So I've decided <laughs> to name them mateys. <laughs> because they mostly look like pirates. I want to take the hole in my heart where loss lives and rename it memories. Call it the story of me. I want to take my heartaches and name them after hurricanes. This is heartache Nimrod, level five idiot. I want to take the place of naming things and call it metaphor. Call it a bridge, an idea that links two things like me and you and redefines them as us. I want to get mixed up in that metaphor and emerge, revamped, resampled. Names are powerful. My brother taught me that. So tonight, I rechristen myself ambition. Oh. And I name all of you daydreamers and wishers and lovers and alive. Ooh. If I had a baby with the future, I would name her possibility. I would name her adventure. I would name her after all of us. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. imaginary spaces. Fifteen. I dream of roads and where they will take me. I sit on the hoods of red cars. I picnic on off-beaten paths. In the dreams, I blast music on perfect speakers, driving away from everything and everyone. Sixteen. I dream of money. 
of possibility and leaving this town. I don't have enough money to pay for gas yet. Seventeen, I dream of boys. Mostly of one, this guy I won't admit to liking, and in the dreams I take him to the park and we're sitting on a bench and I kiss him. And everything's intangible, the way that kisses never really are, but man, in dreams, kisses like that felt like shiny looked. Eighteen, I dream I grow a lady mustache. This is one of many sad dreams. <laughs> Nineteen, I dream of my friend, the offensive lineman, sweeping me into his arms and saving me from falling, I fall a lot. In this dream, I dream it so often that seeing him in the electrical engineering lab becomes awkward. Years later, I ask him if he ever thought of me sexually. He actually sneers when he says no. I hit him. <laughs> Twenty, I dream of prison. Of all the places in my body, I will hide the crack. I dream of prison sex. I dream of conjugal visits with Daniel Day-Lewis. <laughs> a girl can dream. I dream of confessing before a jury of my peers. I dream of more conjugal visits with Daniel Day-Lewis. I dream of the book deal, of the made-for-television movie, of the press conferences, the notoriety, the cell block tangos. I dream of night searches, of shakes and shawshanks, but mostly I dream of conjugal visits with Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> 21, I dream I am made of clay. And with a shaving knife, I slowly peel myself perfect. Oh. The trick I say in this dream is never to add. 22, I dream you did too many drugs. Did you do too many drugs? I did too many <laughs> drugs too, baby. I was born too late, I was born too late. And every time I look at that ugly lake, it reminds me of you in my dreams. I like American music. Dance, baby. 23, I dream we live in a snow castle. And it's really cold, but I think it's pretty. We pour syrup over the walls and have Raspa Sundays. I joke that I'm a Raspafarian, and you think that's funny that in Spanish, the word for snow cone is synonymous with a dying rasp. I bury you in snow, deep like the things you say. 24, I dream there's a bird inside me. His name is Lop Lop. The doctor says that in order for me to live, Lop Lop must be taken out, and that outside of me, Lop Lop will die. The doctor says it must be. I haven't told Lop Lop yet. 25, we're at my parents' house, but really happy, and it's sexy. 26, <laughs> I dream of war brides, I dream of soldiers, I dream of a world without sidewalks and what that would say about us as human beings. 27, I dream we're in love. We both know that dream is fading fast. 28, I dream I'm walking on a tightrope and there's no safety net. I ask why no one strung up something to catch me, but I'm done speaking. I'm already hitting ground. 29, I dream of you. You, I know, do not dream of me. In some ways, that's how it's always been. 30, I dream of roads and where they will take me. I sit on the hoods of red cars. I picnic on off-beaten paths. In the dreams, I blast music on perfect speakers, driving away from everything. And everyone. Women in the clackety shoes. <laughs> Women in the clackety shoes go clackety 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 down the hall. Their big old heels hitting that stone floor like hammers for justice. Like justice ain't blind all of a sudden, so we gotta hammer those eyes shut. Clackety clackety. <laughs> Sometimes I smile back, my own little clackety smile. We know each other, sisters in clackettiness. Ain't too many women unafraid of being clackety these days. And oh, they'll say those clackety clacks, clacking for any old clack that clacks their way, as if to clack a little when the time is right and the itch is ripe, as if that was anything but clacking good. Like getting that clack on is such a terrible thing. Like a little clackety clack ever hurt anything but your self esteem. And oh, they'll say she clacks too easily. Good girls don't clack so quick. They wait until the right time to stiletto their ways into your clack clack. No good man. No good man takes a clack clack without knowing she's a no good clack of a clack. <laughs> I got six inches of loose sight that slam hard enough on those surfaces to earthquake your clackety ignorance. Women of the clackety shoes stomp on shit. 
expensive shit. <laughs> shit that costs more than money. And these women, they know what they want. Clackety clack, don't talk back, let them finish. <laughs> women of the clackety shoes will not apologize for interrupting your serene landscapes with the sound of wood and rubber gutting concrete. They break things stronger than rope, ponies, or the clacking clack holes that rode in on them. And oh, They'll say, we never saw them coming. These women, some of them in kitten heels, some of them in clackety flats, how dare they? We never saw their flashing eyes and giving smiles. We never understood how they gave so much bang without asking for anything but a good clack and return. We never understood that clacking didn't mean loose, that it meant tough, angry, loving like a hurricane. Ain't no surprises when you hear it coming a mile away. Women in the clackety shoes are coming down the hall. Beware. Woo! Okay, um, this is for Jesse Welch. Oh. Um, this is not a poem like I wrote for him, this is just a poem I'm doing for him. That's cute. He's not Lamborn. <laughs> Called the wackness. Flory Beth is here. I'll be doing it for her. For the record. Love you too. <laughs> I keep having imaginary conversations with ex lovers in the car about how they're doing, what they're up to, you know, checking in. There's a dog bed on the highway on the Aspen Wall exit. It's been there for a year. This smushed polyester bed built for a Yorkie or a Scotty or a pug or five. Sometimes I imagine they think of me, my ex lovers, with a smile. Sometimes I imagine they hate me, or worse, they've forgotten. I don't understand why no one picks up that stupid dog bed, but I can't manage to stop on an off-ramp to do it myself. I imagine my exes sitting next to me, and I ask them all to reach out to grab that stupid fucking dog bed, because really, what's it doing on the highway? And even in my imagination, they look at me with a mixture of pity and fear. Because we all know that, damn, I got the strange. And sometimes I think my strange will consume me, that I wear it like the ugly guy at the bar wears desperation. That something about me will always scream, whoa, and not in a Keanu Reeves kind of way. <laughs> and sometimes I'm lucky enough to find someone that'll be fascinated long enough that I can pretend to be the best version of myself until one day I become who I pretend to be, like we all inevitably hope that we do. But I'm too much of a narcissist to believe my own self-pity, although I can't stop wearing it like a modeling condom, suffocating me. Because, hello, some people are allergic to latex, and why are they making condoms that I fit into anyway? No one's penis is that big. <laughs> I suppose I am afraid. Like some porn actresses and strippers, the combination of egocentric tendencies with my poor decision making and reactions have led me down a shame spiral. And then I will culminate dying alone and unloved. But if Eddie Murphy can attempt to come back, I don't think it's below me to try to. Maybe if I got a stick with a hook at the end or a fishing pole, I could drive slow. And someone could try to finally rid the dog bed, the highway, sorry, of the gross and molded dog bed. I can't actually call them, you know, I can't call my ex-lovers and ask them why I'm flawed. They wouldn't say. Or they'd be too hung up asking questions like, how did you get my number? And lady, I don't know who you think I am, which isn't really a question, I suppose. I make up a story about the dog bed. A woman's dog has died, and she's sad. On her way home after seeing her puppy for the last time, she throws the bed out the car window, thinking perhaps that everything has its off ramps. And now each day she drives by, and she sees it. A reminder of what she's lost, of who she imagined she could be when she got the dog, and now it's there, twice a day on each day's commute. Maybe it's just a reminder of how strange life is, of how much strange we all got in us, and how the whackness of it never stops. It's just whack. Wiggity, wiggity, whack. <laughs> I keep having imaginary conversations with ex-lovers in the car. They say that jokes should be funny, should make sense, should make you laugh. They don't have enough strange in them, I guess. Let me die at 27. 
Let them find me asleep, like so many have been found. If I'm asleep, I hope I'm not naked. And if I'm naked, please make sure I've been hitting the gym. What I mean to say, Lord, is don't let me die ugly. Don't let them see what the crack has done to my teeth or hear what it's done to my voice. Lord, if I die young and famous, let them let me die at 27, but if I die old and famous, let me die at 48. Let them find me asleep like so many have been found. I don't want to be old, old. Slip away in a bathtub, a lifetime exchange for an ephemeral sparkle, forever reaching for something I lost at the bottom of a flask years ago. Oh Lord, I know I'm a sinner, but when I'm bad, I know I'm better. Nobody loves me like you, not even my daddy, but he thinks I'm fine. When all I got is a pocket flap of disappointment stitched on my heart, the last death rattle of a pill in the bottle. I keep singing to the moon, Lord, about the old days. I was beautiful then in that moment. When my throat unleashed a prayer so pure it could only be called song. Well, even the white boys say nothing gold can stay. And Lord, I'm platinum. I put the divine in diva. I'm the motherfucking queen of the night. And you keep trying to rehab my soul, but I say no, no, no. I will not sink. I will not warble. I will hit every note of self-destruction perfectly, like an angel, like the box office depended on it. Lord, if I die famous, let me die good looking. Let them find me asleep like so many have been found. But I changed my mind, Lord. Let me be naked. Let me be beautifully naked for the lens, the tabloid, and the checkout machine. Let them look upon the scratches and bruises their focus stares have wrought. Let them look upon my sin, my works, my body and despair. Lord, if I die, let them see. Let them see it all. Mm. Um, so for my last poem, I'm going to do something very ladylike. <laughs> what? And pretty about the art of fucking. Woo! <laughs> it's not ladylike. <laughs> 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 Fuck me like I just invented a wet pussy. And you are a dying man. Yeah. Crawling through the desert. And the only thing that will rehydrate your cracked and dry body is my brown girl juice. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh Fuck yeah. Like you just got fired, and the mortgage is due, and everything's falling apart. <laughs> and the only thing that'll keep you from imploding is my soft pillowcase of a body. Fuck me like the cable company. <laughs> Tell me that you're coming soon, that you're gonna plug in my box, but keep you waiting between 8 and 12 until you finally show. Fuck my day. Fuck me like you're the one percent, like a checking account after Black Friday, like you're kicking the occupiers out of my park in full stormtrooper gear. Fuck me like you own stormtrooper gear. Yeah. Yes. Fuck me harder than organic chemistry. Fuck me so hard that I drop you and retake you and drop you and retake you because I am just bad at remembering the formulas. Fuck me into an English major. Fuck me like you're a Microsoft product. Like you're a Microsoft support employee. Like there's no control, I'll delete and my keys run raw. Better yet, get your metal detector and a snow shovel because we're going digging for my clitoris. Fuck me like you're a House Republican and I'm a socialist black president. Fuck me like you're two white guys from Oklahoma and I'm a federal building. Fuck me like you're a camera phone and I'm Anthony Weiner. Fuck me like your wide stance gives you a lower center of gravity. Fuck me like you're a glue factory and I'm a little pony. <laughs> Fuck me like you're the TSA and I'm a seven ounce bottle of lube you just found in a carry-on. Yeah. Oh, 
obfuscate me. Relish that shit. <laughs> fuck me like it's legitimate so I can shut it down and then fuck me illegitimately so I can't. Fuck me like my body belongs to the state and you live off handouts. Fuck me like you got somewhere else to be. Fuck me like the answer to all your hurt is deep inside me like an untapped well just waiting for you to strike. Fuck me like you don't like me. Like you're trying to feel like a real man. Like pulling my hair will somehow make up for all your failures. Like my vagina will rebuild your credit score and make you less like your daddy. Whoa. Fuck me like I'm your daddy issues. Like all the parts of yourself that you hate can be trapped in a condom. Fuck me like breathing my sweat makes you drown a little less. Fuck me and make me promise it meant nothing. Fuck me even as you leave, but please, baby, just fuck me. <laughs>